now it was a training okay. session yeah uh, i again want to apologize to all the speakers i know how much uh, you are taking pains so really i appreciate the whole uh, the webinar in the the reason for conducting the webinar is to put our engineers or the professors and scientists into the knowledge of domain technology domain that is the main interest for example today's speaker he was talking also the problem what he is facing the sensors availability he was talking about networking he was talking about software which we don't have knowledge as i have seen the speaker still now only yesterday one speaker had some background of real technology who could understand 100% what i'm talking 100% everybody writes about big data everybody writes about Uh, edge computing, but nobody has done it. Our engineers, we we'll just pick up from somewhere and do it. Unfortunately, or fortunately, we are doing that because we are we are afraid of learning that because we do it very complex. So many fields are there, but uh, this particular uh, webinar is aimed at that to give you the courage. So we have till now what is covered is I'll come back. We have covered what can can you please speak? Can you can you please mic? Can you mic? mute all the mic please thank you now <clears throat> what we are done till now is uh, we all learned about what is electricity what is basic how it flow of electrons then we learned compared with hydraulic directly that we talked about the flow rate that's uh, liters per minute is equal to ampere and we told the pressure that is equal to volts so then we came back and learned about basic electronic resistors inductor inductor where the resistance is dynamically varying because of the frequency then capacitor we learned then we learned about something like valves simple valve which is uh, we call as transistor uh, there are two types of transistor before that we learned sorry about diodes which are unidirectional valves we learned then we talked about uh, like like uh, pressure reducer valves something like uh, what you call zener diodes we talked about then we came to uh, well, uh, figured uh, valves uh, that is we call scrs where you can turn on motors or control the motor speeds whatever it is then we came back to uh, a little bit about linear amplifiers that's operational amplifier we learned then second one we learned about digital electronics digital electronics we learned basically logic gates what are the logic and then or how the digital things work then we came to latches we came to flip flop and latches then we came to counters then we talked about multiplexers demultiplexers then we talked about uh, uh frequency to voltage conversion voltage to frequency conversion then we talked about analog to digital conversion digital to analog conversion so this we completed uh, till yesterday in uh, two sessions i think it's a bit fast but i also explained to you we are taking up questions now in this if you have questions can you please raise hand then i will pick up and ask questions shortly we will explain it. the idea of this is only for the training program we want to have interactive so you can raise the hand panelists can raise the hand don't worry about if it is a very simple question also and you can comment and tell me whether i'm going fast or slow or you have not understood because the whole objective of this webinar is that you people understand and you can use electronic engineers and tell exactly what i want for example at the end of it you, you will tell i don't want wifi i don't want zigbee you will understand what is really zigbee and what the hell is used going on that much i guarantee so that's the reason you understand this basic concept what i'm telling the building blocks that knowledge is enough those who are interested will go in detail and study so can you ask me any questions i'll give one minute time for asking questions anybody sees i'll pick up some questions till now what we have talked anybody has questions i i see one sir uh, sir uh, good evening yeah. sir please pradeep uh, kumar sahu sir yeah, can ask, can, sir, can we talk sir pk sahu dr pk sahu oh, yeah please please tell your name please yeah please Uh, sir you. can can we get any training material related to this uh, you, electronic thank you you will but then right now we are in lockdown actually uh, we start to home so i will organize afterwards the training this, right this, now pre this presentations whatever you are showing that no, uh, maybe that is very very preliminary yes i will give that one okay thank I'll you i will give that one will thank will please thank next thank next anybody has any question any suggestions till now okay uh i will come back now to this uh, you can see the slides now so this is what we are going training program interactive so i would request any person can raise their hand and i will see the raising hand if i don't see the raising hand uh 
somebody will help me to raise hand so i will go back uh, actually now i'll we'll start about microprocessor microcontrollers okay digital we finished before the analog we understood what is microcontroller what is it going to do i i remember this when i went micro i mean i learned my microcontroller i remember my chemistry laboratory okay so let us take the example of chemistry laboratory and understand the whole microcontroller it's very easy everybody has we all have gone to chemistry lab so we chemistry lab we have a, we, we have a table we got a table in the front of the table we got a cupboard where we can keep like say hcl h2so4 uh, some standard uh, whatever we want to have we keep them on and we have a beaker or whatever it is uh, on our table where we take two chemicals or salt everything and mix them together okay this is what the chemistry laboratory looks like now you see the chemistry laboratory what i'm showing you so here is a guy standing here he he is me okay i'm the one standing in the chemistry laboratory and this is my table and this is a beaker or bowl what i have and here is where i'm keeping all the materials here and i got a notebook which says that this particular step i must do first take this particular salt and then do this number 2 take this salt and for 2 minutes 3 minutes that's what the chemistry laboratory says so i have got uh, let's say a, a particular stopwatch to see how many minutes comes so i need a stopwatch i have a stopwatch then the chemical laboratory sometimes hcl is uh, for me the hydrochloric acid is over i go to here my uh, local storage i have next room store room or the same in the chemical lab i have in the end they keep the store room so i can go and pick it up fill it up and bring to temporary here near my table so i keep something near my table and main things are available here so this we understood so now i give names to this okay now this is this is called alu that is called arithmetic logic unit so everything in computer is done by arithmetic and logic only there is and we studied in digital and or whatever it is this is the only thing everything multiplication division whatever you call sign well, everything whatever you do so this is the one important this decide now how big is this this particular bowl he is having that depends on how much capacity he has got for example this assume this is the fertilizer manufacturing unit then how many uh, let us say this liters capacity of this that is the productivity output comes so this size we call as a bit 8 bit processing 16 bit processing 32 bit processing example here we have what do we call local storage we have near way cupboard that we call as registers okay this we don't require actually but you, you must know registers i explain and this side here local storage what we have is the what we call as memory data storage memory what we call we store the data for example we take some material here and mix together and keep it back in local storage afterwards we will dispatch a local storage goes outside okay out of the factory so this local storage is a memory what you are going to have uh, for data storage program is here written there program memory okay so you need to know before olden days program memory data memory different even today almost like that because our applications now we will be using program memory which cannot be changed often you will change program memory only once so it's important to know when i want to put a program how much program i can put actually in this so sizes i will tell you example like you want to have 32k uh, we'll come back why 32 16 8 why this numbers like this why not 30k we'll come back afterwards 32 kilobyte and 128 kilobyte uh, and 256 kilobyte this all looks uh, very small to, to us now when we are using a system with this talking everything but this is how the real your microcontrollers work and this is what the 99% of applications in the real life is done then you have now two real big concepts here i tell you division one is called the register oriented technology another one is memory oriented technology uh, i would like to all the viewers to say that i am giving this all this to understanding purpose only so if you want really technically to see there is very slight variations will be there let's not worry about it. agree engineers we understand so we have example intel processors old intel processors they were all register oriented which means i will go walk here and pick up and keep here and start working whereas motorola processors they are all memory oriented there this this local registers are missing almost this i they made me so fast this alu guy or somebody else who help us he goes and picks a very fast one memory and breaks it here today also we have like that today also we have processors which are memory oriented which are register oriented and beginning stages we put this alu what you have this fellow some intelligence inside we give some functions of multiplication division and all 
So we remove that also and we make very simple processor. Most of the processor now are very simple. You put your mathematic calculation through your software only. So that is what today we have. And today's terminology name for the controllers are Cortex, for example, you see the new one from Intel, everything on COA or TA, 32 bit Cortex. The 32 bit Cortex, which you can use for, let us say, a reasonable control in agriculture, small purpose, is hardly about $1, $1. I'm talking about Indian rupees, you'll get the price when you order in 200 pieces. So that's so cheap, the price is down. Now we come back to here, next one. We have, we have to, for example, from your main place where I'm working, I need somewhere to move to get the memory, local storage, and plus, plus I may have to have real-time clock. I want, this is only a timer I have, uh, which gives you a stopwatch. I need real-time, four o'clock, I have to go home. I have to come back around eight o'clock, back again. So this is a real-time clock I require to connect. So this we call a local bus system. So how to connect these wires or who will do this job? You will see in my controller. Then we require this produce whatever we have from the local storage. We need a truck to carry it outside, to deliver outside, to do the job. And that we call a bus external communication. Okay. So we have to understand first what type of power we require here, what type of storage place he requires here, what type of storage place he requires here, and what type of the local bus, local connectivity, what is the name of local connectivity? Because many of the sensors, you'll connect sensors here, like real-time clock I have given. And you'll connect, for example, here memory. Okay, like data flash. You've got all pen drives. You won't put there. Now, you know, pen drive 128 GB. How it works, pen drive? So that is, that is what the local storage again comes. How it's communicates. How the data is going and storing inside. So we don't worry about the details. But we know this type of storage is different than what your, your uh, program is running. That, uh, that particular memory is different. But these memories require a certain way of bus, a, a protocol that how they will work. So when you select sensors, you must know. So you must understand the name of the protocol. That's all I want. And general functionality. We'll come back to this. So this is the generally what a microcontroller has. Now we see the microcontroller next. In this screen, you will see what I'm telling. Clearly, you will see. So now I move here. You see this. We have a flash. The flash is the program memory. So there where I put in the flash, where it's called, I can erase it and program it. So how many times? Normally, 10,000 times. These are all very important. Okay, somebody says 10,000 times. It's very big, you think, but you cannot store data. For example, I cannot store a counter on that. So 10,000 times when I erase counter, it will disappear. So you cannot use a counter in flash, even though you can do it some other way. So your flash is 10,000 times only you can erase and prove. We have something called EEPROM. This is again small memory you can store, storage place, where you can keep, but you can keep up to 1 million. Okay, 1 million times you can erase and write. 1 million is quite significant enough. So, you, but you require only counters to keep, for example, uh, any counters, anything that you'll keep in this particular memory. Then you got, uh, to run the program, you need a SRAM. So this is for programming, program to run actually, to run, the ALU to work. So this normally most of the controllers have, and we'll come back to one by one controller example today also. So, but I think you should have decent amount. So now if somebody says, I want to use Linux system, then of course this must be very high. But you don't want to use, use a Linux operating system. You want to use a C programming. Then it's, it's a bit very much less it will come. So most of the real life applications are not using Linux. Now even Java when it comes very small level they come. So, but still the RAM will be high. So ROM is the one what is similar to the flash. But it is permanently given by the company. Then this we have seen already AD. We have to be very careful in microcontroller. What type of resolution of AD we have. What type we have. Most of the controllers have a successive approximation. Yesterday we learned that, that is enough for us, but sometimes we require it's better to have a dual slope or sigma delta when we need accuracy. And especially in some of the agricultural sensors, noisy environment outside, and which doesn't change, change very fast. For example, the temperature doesn't change very fast. Okay, you, you temperature, you, you measure once in 10 minutes, okay, in certain application in agriculture when I go. Once in one minute, okay, you don't require 100 measurements in a second of temperature. So you, you better to use that. So you see most of the controllers have successive approximation is enough. Now resolution we talk about 12 bit, 10 bit and 8 bit. I would most of the controllers today modern have 12 bit. Use 12 bit. Don't use 10 bit or 8 bit. If possible, avoid it. Because the resolution is 4000 steps you will get resolution in, in 12 bit. That is better than getting 8 bit which is 256. So you have to be careful on that. Then DA. DA may not be required, digital to analog, may not be required in all the applications. 
but wherever you go for motor control applications whatever it is you require digital to analog conversion built inside is better you can buy a chip also put inside but you just for understanding for you then next one is we have we are talking about local uh, communication lo local bus i told like for example real time clock i want to keep so which one i'll use bus for that i'll explain you here uh, something written here spi i to c these two are very popular okay we will see this in the i will explain in the next slide this is i will explain okay short i will explain we'll go there i to c is two wire communication there are two wires and they send digitally this can this is where all the sensors are attached the i to c and the spi you will get sensors like temperature sensor humidity sensor pressure sensor you all get them with this interface i to c and spi interface so they are spi for example standard is three wires or four wires i to c is two wires but you cannot put very long distance the distance your your controller is there you should not be out of the box for example you can have one controller box another one sensor box connect through wire you have to be very careful in agricultural application because your noise coming up shielding all the issues will come don't do that if prefer that i'll give another solution here so but within that for example a box you make with the temperature sensor this one this two wire system i square c you know spi is actually using three wires a clock and data synchronous transfer also can happen it's fast very fast spi is used for example memories when you want to store log data logging like temperature i want to log i want log pressure it, 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 if you want to use spi uh, for data logging probably it will uh, it costs hardly about 1 or 2 dollars or, or whatever 100 200 rupees you can store up to several mbps of data so if you use the spi so that is the power of the particular spi interface serial peripheral interface you want to know now we come back to urt urt is a uh, old computers had only this urt rs232 we used to call the terminal you connect the terminal from the computer to terminal they are all serial which is universal standard very first standard ever came into picture is the urt universal asynchronous receiver transmitter so you give the baud rate for example if you recall before 30 years the 56 kbps modem all the modems were working run run sound you will get the modem ka sound very first when the when the internet came into picture so they all had this urt now also you have urts for all interfacing purpose you will see in one by one application next i have written can bus can bus is the uh, first day itself we talked about is controller area network so there are also two wires but this is the interesting thing here is we are connected in one group for example now uh, right now what we are having is master slave because i am the master and you are all slaves so for, uh, sorry i'm not the literal sense i'm talking communication so i say dr indramani he will say yes and he, when i say dr indramani talk he will talk others are listening but you will not interfere inside okay you will not interfere that is the protocol we are following okay so long that is that is the protocol we follow many things will work out but in a engine or anywhere else there are temperature for example dr indramani is a temperature sensor in the engine okay and i am the fuel sensor so we are all connected with two wires now warning system comes there indramani will have priority than me he, he can overrule me because i leave with temperature in the engine goes high is a problem so he will have will give the priority that he will go faster so that or the arbitration automatically done by the can bus we will explain afterwards and the complete detail we will go through j1939 protocol which is for the tractors used okay we will come and see so simple it is and we have to, so we will drive that through usb we know already automatically only we, we also know the difference of usb is only for short distance used uh, urt is when i told the other way around urt is very long distance they can go actually if you plan urt ka sub division of protocols we have rs485 protocol you can go up to several kilometers okay i have done it before 25 years several kilometers so it is not a problem when you go to urt others are all very short distance can can go quite long distance in, in the tractor and uh, trailer whatever it is can is used can is open can different protocols i will come back usb is for short distance very fast there are also two wires actually usb also but they cannot be used efficiently for our agriculture for uh, this one but if you buy any equipment you put in equipment they say usb connected download here so that is what you use we come back here next important thing is what you require in the controller design is a timer the timer is very important feature for all the functions you are doing how many timers are there 
how much the resolution. Now I say as a designer we require, but we should know at least whether capacity expand or not when you select about a microcontroller. Then this is uh, something like even even trigger timers are there. Okay, there are ACTs. We'll see in detail afterwards. We have RTC real time clock. Sometime in the chip or outside we can put. Watchdog is important, very important in agricultural application especially uh, because something goes wrong with the uh, controller. It creates crashes. What you will do? So you need a watchdog outside to bark. So I have to feed that watchdog one biscuit every minute. If I forget once, he will go and reset me completely. Okay, so that is called watchdog. So this is important uh, to use them also in your application. You must tell the guy who is supplying, you have watchdog backup or not. Now there are questions and answers. Watchdog in the same microcontroller is there. Some power problem comes. The microcontroller will go crazy. Watchdog also instantly will go crazy. So in many uh, agriculture applications, you have to think of having a watchdog outside. The dog must be outside, not within your house. It must be outside. So that is one of the concepts we can argue on it, but this you have to consider. Next one we come back here is the crystal to be used, which is the uh, what I told you is a uh, uh, clock for two minutes to put the salt and use whatever it is. Okay, stop clock. This is the clock generated by IRC. Today's crystal is not required. Most of the new controllers they have uh, uh, the internally automatically generating uh, clocks. But you must be careful about temperature in agriculture. We have, I remember I have used minus 40 degrees Celsius. In Germany, minus 40 degrees Celsius must work. Okay, the spray system what I designed. At the same time, summer, when the cabin, when they uh, close in the summer, I get up to 60 degrees inside. So the biggest challenge is temperature will be careful. 60 degrees, even in India, you'll get a hot summer, you'll get easily. But outside also in winter, we don't get minus 40 degrees, but we do get at minus 15, minus 20 degrees in certain places. But I think it must work at least minus 10 degrees. So you have to be careful in those cases to use crystals. Many of the designers will not know this technical, the electronic fellow. They will say, sir, clock is there, but you must ask, remember to ask him the temperature variation. Then we need a lot of input outputs, depending on how many relays, how many pumps you want to start, how many sensors you want to connect and see how many switches you want, uh, you want operating switch or not that you require. The important thing is, another one is the uh, two, facilities, capture and timer, this, this will see details sometimes when you go for other applications. Like some of the operations must happen very fast, even in agriculture, some of the operations uh, to trigger. When a trigger comes, immediately I must start. So that can be done with a capture. I capture at this moment the state of all of the things, what is happening, inputs, all the inputs. Then I come to pulse width modulation, that is uh, written here as a PWM, pulse width modulation. It's very important for speed control. So pulse width modulation means uh, you have a certain frequency of pulse uh, signal. For example, let us say 100 hertz is uh, it remain as 100 hertz only. But how much time it is high, how much time it's low, that will you vary it. So that based on that, you are, uh, what you attach afterwards, the amplifiers like transistor or MOSFET, they will change the speed. They will change the current automatically. So the whole thing wonder happens in DC control, whatever it is, is PWM. Even if you build DC motor, if you go, this is a very important feature. Very important feature, PWM is, you, most of the controllers give, but you must understand the range of PWM support, depending on whether you use for BLDs application or for normal application. Interrupts are important, most of them have, and we have something called non mass couple interrupts. So, and we have a DMA direct memory access. Uh, we may not require this, is, uh, technical guys will know. The question is where some of the controllers give a touch interface also, uh, which means a switch, you, know, you require a switch, you will see afterwards we'll explain different parts of switch, whether it's available touch. So these are all the general uh, features, I think, the what as I see it, is what is available in the controller, and the person must uh, know or uh, understand this little bit, the functionality of it. So your designer, you can tell, or you can ask them what processor you use, is it Cortex 32. He will say Cortex 32. He will write a lot of names, a lot of names, but tell him how much memory it has got. Okay. How much AD converter, what is the resolution it has got? Uh, because you can expand the board or not. What is the input output limitation you have got? Then it's easier for you, you to guide the fellow who is electronic engineer to design. And I think as an agriculture engineer, I designed, I think anybody else can learn how to design. You can Google and find out this topic, so much information available. Now, I will, only this slide, I will stop and ask for questions because we go next uh, level. So I'll ask any questions till now. Anybody can ask questions. I will give a time.
there's already i see two questions i see here first i take the question from dr uh, sorry engineer dilip kumar kushawa can you uh, ask your question yes sir uh, uh thank you sir my question is that uh, 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 most of the sensors uh, available in the market for arduino are i2c based and as you told that the uh, the signal communication come to the question come to the question first come yes, to the yes. question first sorry the uh, question uh, question is that how uh, is if a mpu sensor is there so if i want a 5 meter distance to uh, signal how i can pass okay. the, the question, yeah you have to put a small controller small okay. controllers you also have controllers up to 8 8 pin controller which is very very small black like button size your controllers will show it afterwards put them separately process it and send with the data in a different other protocol like outside i told a truck like truck you send them don't don't keep them like a local bus keep them outside bus okay that remember it so it's it's idiotic to put everything in one next question please i see uh, robish mighty is having a question i will attend all the questions here because it's very important i think please don't hesitate to ask questions robish mighty any question Yeah. Okay. Yeah, doctor. Doctor Smile. Uh, you know, you have explained the features from right to left. Is there any uh, logic of doing that or placing also in the uh, you know a presentation like that? Well, left all, and right. All, is all what you have presented is flash EEPROM. You started from here and then went to IRC, and the microcontroller no, is in the center. Any logic for that? No, 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 no. I just made a story to tell you easily. Okay. Understand. Okay. Fine. Thanks. There is no question of uh, absolutely no question. Thank you. Okay. So I, I think the questions are from attendees. No questions are there. We continue the next part. Okay. Uh, now we come to here to see the. what the questions uh, was asked is for example first we see here i square c which has got two wires i told is the acl here you can for example only two wires for control will come you can attach for example a temperature sensor a humidity sensor a pressure sensor okay your controller will access one after another that so whenever you select the sensor you must be careful now like uh, another one of the questions came sir i got a temperature sensor and humidity gives you an i square c how will i connect so far away i need it you put a small controller there as well as you can use to use a small controller very small controller costing maybe less than 100 uh, rupees 200 rupees you can make a small pcb put there and connect to through for example different rs485 is another communication available so you have to convert it and bring it your main controller you cannot connect everything so this i square c is for local connection you want to for example put uh, rtc real time clock you want to put a storage device so a lot of uh, or for example if you want to let me give another one like uh, uh, you want a pedometer i mean you want to measure the acceleration accelerometer you want to put okay for example there was a, uh, somebody asked about how the cow uh, find is the heat or not so the pedometer that also comes with accelerometer comes with i square c or with spi so a controller and a small accelerometer you got three axis accelerometer available as cheap as less than 50 rupees 100 rupees that's the price so you can find x and y z may what is actually how many g it is so one of the idea is that is what the idea is pedometer using the cow car whether it's on heat or not how is important i i had a discussion i have to thank uh, narendra shah for that i was in iit so we had discussion it, they they say i asked them only one question is there are some people have come from outside i think the 10% is benefit it will much more because one month the cow uh, you cannot milk the cow one month will delay will be there if you don't identify in the heat or not and that shows by movement of the cow so a pedometer can be used for example this these are all the ideas what will come out that pedometers can be used very small with a i square c now spi is similar with a memory you can use uh, you can expand the memory uart is the one we already know uh, i told you old computers are used we'll see in detail this uart ka will be different buses will be the details i will show you now uh, one of the stuff what we have is here with the uh, arduino which is very popular everywhere people talk hobby and the problem is you i will show you afterwards when you google it you'll find lot of people even ag engineers now i think 90% is not not agriculture engineers they just take some arduino board connect something i have a temperature sensor in the field working i have a soil moisture working uh, actually it's difficult to uh, make it Practically, you will know the problem. What others had, we have, we have some more speaker coming. They will tell you about the problems really. I also know the problems, but we'll tell you what is 
Audio is excellent, excellent for learning. Excellent, one of the easiest to learn. I think anybody wants to learn this, they must touch Arduino and learn a little bit of how to use it at least. And it's very easy to buy, very cheap also. And it has got interface, I tell you, TX, uh, LEDs is there. A lot of digital pins you can have. It has got, uh, for example, the analog input, but not very accurate. It's, it's hardly about 8 bit and 10 bit you have, certain versions. You've got a USB to connect data to the computer. The question is you can program in C. Uh, there are 8 bit, most of the Arduinos are in 8 bit. You also have some of the 80 mega which comes in higher one and 16 bit. But Arduino is for a, a very small application and for let's say hobbies or learning only. But real application when you want to use, you will not prefer to use it. Once you have used it, you look excited. But afterwards you know that uh, it is a bit uh, too less for all of us to use Arduino. So I would suggest any engineer want to learn Arduino, you buy one, probably 300 rupees for, I don't know, uh, Mukund, can you tell me how much uh, Arduino costs? Yeah, Arduino costing is around two, uh, 300 rupees, Arduino Uno. And the Mega would be around uh, 800 rupees. Okay, how much, how difficult it is Arduino to use for anybody? Uh, not for non-electronic engineers, with the, with the idea what I've given till now only. See, I presume the person who is planning to use it at least has some idea of uh, programming in C. Once he has that, then it's very easy to program an article. So, we will end of this course, we have to get that skill set introduced yeah. with our people. That is our objective. Let us see. Okay. Next slide now. So, we will not go and see. This is Arduino, the different insight. I'll just go through. What we told, we'll see again. SPI. You, you see what is the SPI written there. You see watchdog timer. You see interrupt. You heard already. You see analog comparator. You don't compare analog. You heard. It's enough for you. IO, IO written there. Module. Program. It has got flash program memory. The same thing what we discussed. Instruction register. We have RAM. EEPROM. What we already studied. With EEPROM is 1 million times you can erase and write. Good for counters. Okay. And uh, flash and all you can use some settings and all you want to store that you can use that. So this is the Arduino inside what we saw. Now, I will have uh, one more, I'll go through this. This is the Arduino connection diagram. I just show you, which is available to you in the net, everything. So I need not put everything, give a documentation to you. You just write down what I say, one line, Arduino, you'll find all this information. Only people, you know, you'll find it difficult when you go through first time and read even YouTube, everything difficult. You need to spend a lot of time. So this particular webinar will help you to understand that is the objective of this. We have second one is the, uh, I will explain this, is a system on chip. Okay, right now we, we talked about controller, microcontroller, and uh, controller is different. It doesn't have something external communication. The truck is not there. What we are talking about, the truck, uh, the truck is not there. So how to get the truck? So that is also built inside. Here, for example, you see here, an RF, RF, RF written there, and there's a Wi-Fi antenna. So there are some chips available with Wi-Fi, for example, connected here. So it has got all of the features also, like you talk about the SPI and it has got I square C, we talk about, and uh, uh, let's see, SDO standard IO interface. We come back to here. Uh, this is additional here we have, which is RF. RF is, this is a Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is a very interesting, we'll talk about Wi-Fi, 2.4 gigahertz. I, I told you in the first day itself, we have to see the, uh, radio, radio uh, uh, the spectrum of radio spectrum, and uh, I will tell you now, Wi-Fi is 2.4 gigahertz. Now your Bluetooth also 2.4 gigahertz. Now somebody uh, their first day speech told Wi-Fi it doesn't go far away this problem. It's a question of application. Wi-Fi can go up to 25 kilometers easily, and we are allowed to transmit in India also with 2.4 gigahertz up to 25 kilometers but it needs a directional antenna. Directional antenna means we have to have one-to-one -one facing each other. But agricultural applications, a simple way to use, if you use a Wi-Fi, which is very cheap, less than a dollar, dollar price. And, it's ex and the question of the skill of you is important in using Wi-Fi. Don't tell the the experience because the electronic guy does not know what is your need. And you only take, and you, you don't want to give him, a, most of the problem complication is, for example, my, my, my friend designed for me, I will support him always. Ah, he's the best, he's the best. But we don't see the simple thing. I tell 2.4 gigahertz, use it above the plant height. For example, 10 feet, if you keep, everywhere you can go, easily 200 meters. 
okay, which available at 50. 100 meters guaranteed you have, but certain restrictions must be used because this is, you know, in Wi-Fi at home, you cannot use uh, two rooms, then you must think about that also. So uh, we will come back, each one cover it, but uh, each point will cover later on, but I'm saying SOC is available. For example, you can see here, one of the one which, which I told you is 100 rupees available. 100 rupees, again, I'm talking about volume pricing of few hundred pieces. You want to buy one, two pieces, you'll get for maybe less than 200 rupees. This can do all. I mean, you can connect directly. This one you can connect with directly a PC and you can program and this will work by say. And you will see this chip is I've used uh, uh, in one of the applications in the field for irrigation and it's working. Okay, that we'll see tomorrow. Somebody will explain you that whatever, I hope so. But I think this is, this particular one is used. So you see the power of uh, understanding the technology is very, very important. Here we have power down in this particular one. They are not the best one. We are talking about what is available now. We'll come back to many other things. It has got a Wi-Fi antenna. It has got a memory inside uh, for a flash. It has got RAM, timer, IO. AD, AD converter is not so, uh, it's only 10 bit AD conversion, which means you get up to only 1,000, 24 or 1,000. Let me put that way. It has got SPA, PWM interrupt, and it has got a watchdog timer. So everything for a dollar you get, and you get a communication. And there are a lot of protocols we learn. We learn protocol. We learn name of protocol, how to connect it, how to get it. So all the problem of field problem, uh, where you're connecting. For example, Zigbee, when you're using, we'll come back. Zigbee also 2.4 gigahertz, but it's only protocol. It's only protocol difference. We, we have Zigbee protocol, we have got HTTP protocol. We will learn all those protocols, what is the difference between them, how to use it. But unfortunately, most of the research when you read here from agriculture engineers, we put Zigbee, Zigbee without understanding because the guy who, electronic fellow knows only Zigbee model available, he connected and it works because he saw his example. But I think we will understand what is Zigbee difference is. So it's also a, using 2.4 uh, gigahertz or you can use other, see, I tell you again, Wi-Fi is not, uh, sorry, I talk so much, I'll give you one more. 2.4 gigahertz is you, we are using. Another one is called ISM band, industrial, scientific, and medical. So that is very much used also everywhere. 433 megahertz. So 433 megahertz is not allowed in India. Then we have 860 megahertz, which is allowed in India, UK. Then we have 912 megahertz. So 900 megahertz, Kabo, US is using. We will explain that also, what is the reason next later on. We'll come to the third one. Today we'll conclude with one more because I show the power of uh, all the controllers and one. This is called Raspberry Pi. This, uh, before this is not the only one. Before that many companies have produced several. This is popular now and affordable price. Uh, Beagle boards are one of the best ones. Yeah, I have used Beagle boards before 10 years and they are the best if you want to use. I, if you want to, come, if you want to compare the boards as a technical guy. But I think a Pi, you see the hand, you see very small. This advantage you can use uh, like a Linux like a Linux programming. You can connect directly to a PC, you can connect. This is the power of it. There are two example models I'm telling from Raspberry Pi, and this is the this much big. It has got a lot of features, you'll see the features. This one is zero with very less features, and this is somewhere about eight, 900 rupees, available zero, and this probably around 2,500, 3,500 rupees range. Now, we will see uh, uh, how do you connect to Raspberry Pi 3, you say PAR sensor, you connect buzzer. These are all you'll find a lot of diagrams like this. A camera you can connect. We will see that now a bit detail. You have, for example, what are there in this particular board which you buy for 2500 or something like that. You got a Ethernet. Ethernet is what you connect actually. You know, Ethernet port to your laptop. We'll come back and explain the pro. What is Ethernet? What is Wi Fi? Why, why we are using Ethernet? Wired communication. You got a gigabit Ethernet here. And you got a USB, USB, two types of USB. One mouse is one USB, another one is a pin drive is another one. They both are different, slightly different. We'll read, we'll see it afterwards. Then you got a, a, audio. This wonder of this board is audio. You, you can connect a microphone to this. So, and you can also connect a display for it. A display means uh, where you can connect your uh, directly a screen. It, it's a computer screen you can connect. A HDMI port, what do you call it? A TV you can connect directly. Everything you can do for this. So it is wonderful, but I would suggest you go one step first. Arduino, you take first, do it. Then you come Linux, you have to learn for this. We'll come back to it. Now, this is, a, this is something I want to say. In the internet, you will find a lot of things will come. So they have used for agriculture purpose. This, this one done. None of them work. So our interesting people take something and take it and do it. So I think before that, now at the end of the, our, this, our webinar, at least, I would prefer people understand. The typical one and say this will not work. 
so let's not try this let's try something else that's the idea i think with this i think uh, i would uh, decide to close the this particular talk and i would like to ask for questions now uh, i see ptv Pra prabhu from sirkat can you enable GTV Prabhu from Sirkat, can you enable? Prabhu, can you ask questions? You are permitted to speak. Can you? Okay. Let him, till the time he comes, Bhaskar Gekwad is there? Bhaskar Gekwad, if you are listening, you can ask questions now. Yes, uh, uh, the You can talk, please. Can you enable his mic? Can you enable your mic? You have to enable the mic with yourself. Can you? Okay. Next, Bhaskar Nai. I'll call you back again. Okay. okay. Fix up. Dr. Naranesha has a question. Yeah, yeah uh, no, I just want to compliment that uh, two case studies which I mentioned yesterday. One was Jasmine storage and another was seed storage. And one of our MTech students did exactly what you said. He used the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi to give a solution in some 1,500 rupees to make a control system for controlling the temperature. And the requirement were very, very, very precise. For Jasmine flower, for example, we had to control between 4 to 8 degrees Celsius. And for seed storage, it was between 40 to 20 degrees Celsius. And it was very, very precisely done by an MTech student using the solutions that you talked about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, you see, uh, Bhaskar Gekwad, can yeah. you speak now? Uh, am I audible? So. Audible, audible. Please, go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, so I've been working in this area for almost 10 years. And with, with big uh, come, to the question. come to the question, okay. please. Come to the Thank question, please. Um, you don't have time. Uh, in my opinion, it has come to a point that uh, hardware has evolved much faster. Uh, the, uh, the architecture engineers probably should be more trained on the software aspect side. So that yeah, yeah, we'll come back. What okay, thank you. Thank picture. you. Yeah. Thank you. Next person, GTV Prabhu, you have any question? Okay. Next, Sugumar Anand Kumar. This is the last question I will take today. Tomorrow again morning, I, I will take the questions. Rest of the questions. Sukumar, if you hear, you can talk. Hello, okay. ah, sir. Yeah, yeah. Sir, ask me. Actually, uh, you talked about uh, temperature sensors and uh, RS sensor. Uh, any gas sensors that will be used to uh, uh, particularly fix in cold storage to measure the gases by using this Arduino yes. board and other yes. things. That they are available. Yeah, they are available. Census is a separate topic. We'll be covering it later on. We are, okay. we are just introducing now you the slowly, slowly, one by one. Census is a separate okay. topic. We'll be covering that time. We'll explain you the census. There are many available. Sure. Sir. Thank you. Now, Thank you. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Indramani, I hand it over to you. Uh, for panelists, any suggestion is there in talk? Please, Indramani, you take over. Want to say something, please? Yeah. So yeah, I think we should get a feedback on your speed of delivery. To me, you are fast. So request, if you could uh, that, uh, slow down a little bit. So maybe I'm too old to keep up with your speed, but I think uh, uh, as a teacher, I understand. I think that you have to be a little slower. Okay. And also when you are explaining, uh, I think there also you have to slow down. Okay. Uh, in a sense that uh, you say a sentence or two about one device or one component, and then go to it. I think before people switch to the next one, they're still struggling with the previous one. You know? okay. So okay. give a little gap. Okay? okay. Sorry about just. No, no, it's a perfect. I would like feedback actually from all of you. Anything because the idea is I'm I'm doing it to help you. <laughs> Nothing of I think. Uh, no, you're doing excellent. I, I want to help. So I will go slow. Uh, there was a timing issue again. I want to cover this much part because we have got only four days. <laughs> out. 
and we have to cover a lot of it vast area. Your idea is not uh, idea is that what other people are grasping. See, All right. your delivery is as useful as other people are able to take it and understand. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Actually, this was the feedback. Also, there was a question. Also, somebody requested that uh, Dr. Sayer should uh, go little, little slowly. So that people okay. can understand. This is one. And second, uh, there is a request that uh, at the end of your talk, if you can take some example, uh, you know, application to agriculture, you know, that one, and you can explain. So we'll see from tomorrow that uh, at the end, uh, if you can take some some example, you know, and this how how we are going to use it. Actually, uh, the syllabus what I given the first day, applications are we have to learn census, for example. We have to learn a lot of topics. Then only it, the, I can talk. Otherwise, it's very difficult for anybody to understand. We will go for applications each one. I think the speakers also come. Like tomorrow, we'll have a fixed speaker with uh, again with water. Let us see. Uh, I think it will come. I I understood the idea. Give me for another one lecture. I think will be census will be the next one. Then we will cover it up slowly. Okay. Thank you. I really I really uh, congratulate you for a wonderful uh, lecture. This one that uh, training session. This is uh, very very beneficial, and uh, I am getting feedback from my friends. It's going wonderful. Both the talks uh, by Dr. Uh, Ashok Mishra and uh, my friend SS Ray. It was really very very uh, good, and uh, many you know uh, Mishra ji uh, put the things you know real application what they are doing at. Uh, in IIT Kharagpur, and then he 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 explained the challenges also, and uh, that are Ray actually that uh, idea of many of us get confused that where is the you know where satellite uh, capability and this uh, drone capability how to how to actually make both the complementary. So uh, that question was raised by my friend and uh, SS Ray uh, answered. He actually he was uh, addressing he was just speaking from his office and had to go to home, so he just uh, he took permission and uh, asked that uh, he want to go. So he has already left. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a Thank wonderful you. day, wonderful evening, and wonderful uh, webinar session. And uh, we will meet tomorrow same time. And uh, we are we initially we had planned that uh, uh, Saturday Sunday we will make three hours, but uh, yeah. I don't. We will communicate. We will discuss and we will communicate. And uh, I think Professor Singh may advise that it should be uh, Saturday, Sunday. Can we make it three hours, five to eight, or should be this one? Uh, three hours is a bit long. Yes, long. No, I do three. I, 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 so I, I think we should consider I, only two hours and then uh, okay. we reschedule uh, later on. After okay, some okay. break, I agree. No, so tomorrow also we'll have it. Uh, we'll sixteen, uh, eighteen hours, eighteen hours, twenty hours. Tomorrow at six p.m. So we will have Dr. Sidhu from Visa and uh, Dr. Sony from Kharagpur tomorrow. The twenty minute presentation we will, uh, you know, adhere to the timing and we will have a good uh, training session tomorrow. Thank you all, uh, you know, uh, for joining. Uh, you know, Manjul from you know your intervention yeah. was wonderful, excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Namaskar. Please close down. Yeah.